Well, thousands of Americans have been rounded up and prosecuted after going to the Capitol on January 6th. And the media went ballistic, of course, calling it a violent insurrection. Republicans said we would see the over 14,000 hours of hidden video that would show us and give us a real awareness of what actually happened on that day. Of course, it was being kept from all of us. Here was Matt Gates almost a year ago. This is January of 2023. Listen to Matt Gates saying we would get to see this footage. Matt, do you anticipate allowing the dogs to be released, if you will, against this fourth branch of government? Yeah, Kevin McCarthy told us he's going to get the evidence out in front of the American people, and that means releasing the 14,000 hours of tapes that have been hidden that I think would give more full context to that day rather than the cherry picked moments that the January 6th committee tried to use to inflame and further divide our country. So yes, I do believe that part of this deal is a concession that we are going to get the truth out in front of the American people. Well, that hasn't happened. And we still, to this day, have not seen that footage. More arrests are still expected against Americans. And we're still waiting on the documents from the DOJ and these videotapes from the DOJ and Congress. Uh, all of it is being kept from the American people. One man who had his life turned upside down that day is Brandon Straka, the founder of Walkaway. He was there to give a speech on January 6th. He never went into the Capitol. He was there on the grounds. And then a few weeks later, the FBI showed up at his house and arrested him and had his life turned upside down. Brandon is back here on the show because a couple of things. First of all, you launched a brand new app for Walk Away after being banned on Facebook. So your Facebook group was banned, I guess, for telling the truth, telling these stories. So you launch a brand new app, which now has tens of thousands of users, which is amazing. So I hope all of our audience goes and downloads the Walk Away app. Also, you're leading a big new event which is a five-year anniversary of Walk Away, which we'll get to here in just a little bit. But Brandon, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. And um, it, it, I think it's important you know, to do interviews like this and talk about this because to your point, yes, my life was definitely turned upside down. But part of what I want to do here is to show people you can recover and move forward uh, after things like this happen to you. You know, You don't have to stay kind of stuck in this perpetual state of being a victim of the DOJ. Right, right. No, you've done amazing work in the face of this. I think a lot of other people would have cowered and and crumpled up. I mean, I think it's the true test of a human being that you can overcome adversity and rise and be stronger as a result of it. So, you know, we're, we're proud of the work that you've done here. So we'll get to the, the event here in a moment and we'll get to the app in a moment. But I want to talk to you first, a couple of big news items that happened over the past 24 hours, of course, number one, Donald Trump being actively, tr they're trying to keep him off of the 2024 ballot, trying to paint him as leading an insurrection, that they would invoke this as part of the Constitution, that no one who's led an insurrection, of course, can run for president again. That's one big piece of this puzzle. And then the other piece of these, these videotapes, the 14,000 hours of video footage that Matt Gates and Republicans had said we would absolutely see. Now Kevin McCarthy is out of the picture. He's no longer Speaker of the House. We have a new Speaker of the House. We still don't have this footage. Do you think we're ever going to see these hours of footage of what happened that day? I honestly don't know. Um, that you know, This is something that we've been told many times by many Republicans and many positions of leadership would be coming. And then there's always some sort of like, little backhanded trick with it. Like when they released it, but they released it to Tucker Carlson. Uh, then the next thing they did was they released it, but then they just released it to Julie Kelly and John Solomon. So it's like, are you going to release it to the public or not? And for a while, I was really concerned about them releasing it to the public because there are these massive networks of people like sedition hunters and, and capital whatever hunters who literally have no lives. They, they have nothing going on in their lives other than to comb through this footage and try to identify people who walked inside the Capitol so that they can report them to the FBI and destroy their lives. But I think, you know, honestly, at this point, here we are all these years later, the narrative of January 6th is so controlled by the left and it's so hyperbolic to the point where we're literally talking about removing a presidential candidate from the ballot for insurrection. I guess at this point I say there's nothing on those tapes that could be worse at this point than the narrative of what the left has made up about January 6th. 
True. And of course, their narrative is the one that sits out there. Most Americans see it that way. The Biden administration has actively been trying to campaign on this idea that these are pro-mega white supremacist extremists who are upending the United States of America, never mind the fact that our borders are wide open and tens of thousands of people are pouring across our borders every day. Um, and we've been covering it actively here on the show. But but you guys who went to the Capitol on that day, you're you're the greatest threat to democracy. Yeah, and it's funny because when I went to the Capitol on January 6th, I actually shot 13 videos. I did street interviews with people, and this was after my the the video that got me raided by the FBI. You know, to remind your audience, I didn't go inside the Capitol. I didn't engage in any violence. I did not witness any violence, and I didn't even witness any rioting. I mean, no sound-minded person, reasonable person, could ever construe that I was a part of a riot or witnessed a riot. I was with a group of people outside. The doors were open. Some of them were trying to push their way inside. The rest of them were outside shooting videos just like I was. Um, you know, there may have been some disorderliness, I, I could say that, but it certainly was not a riot. But I, I nonetheless, I after that eight minutes that I stood outside the Capitol, I shot 13 more videos doing street interviews, just talking to people, asking them what brought them to D.C., why they were there, what they saw. And it was interesting to me how many people there were black and uh, Hispanic and Asian and gay. And I mean, this was certainly not a white event or a white supremacy event. There was every type of person there on january 6th all together all unified under the belief that you know something was very wrong with the 2020 election and they wanted to stand up for democracy and the american voter but this was by no means a a white supremacist event i mean there was every type of person there uh, a few weeks ago, we saw following what happened on October 7th with the Hamas attacks in Israel, we saw the capital overtaken with pro-Palestinian, some said pro-Hamas protesters. We now know actually that the group, uh, a large portion of those group, according to the New York Post, were funded in part by George Soros, who came into the capital and held up, you know, also, they were calling for a ceasefire, but they basically took over the capital. And there were, there were arrests. There was a lot of people online saying, well, I, I hope these people are, are held to the same standard as the January 6th individuals who came into the Capitol that day. Um, what did you think when you saw that footage from the Capitol um, of these protesters coming in and basically shutting down the Capitol on uh, just about a week and a half ago? Well, I think like the majority of people in this country, I, I, you know, I'm so used to the double standard at this point that I recognized that there were striking similarities between what was going on there and what happened on January 6th. And then I'd say even uh, in some circumstances, what they were doing was m worse because they were actually in there screaming, banging, causing a commotion. Now, I'm very aware that there are people on January 6th who broke windows and struggled with police officers. I'm not excusing that. But the vast majority of people who actually entered the Capitol walked around and took pictures. They weren't screaming and banging and, and, and doing things like that. Nonetheless, the people who walked inside the Capitol were charged with this very unique felony charge uh, that they're calling obstruction of an official proceeding, which carries a 20 year prison sentence, potential 20 year prison sentence. So some people have been convicted of that charge and are in prison right now, serving years in prison on a, a felony of obstructing an official proceeding on January 6th. Uh, January 6th, a lot of January 6 protesters are in prison right now. My question is. Why are the pro-Palestine protesters not facing these consequences? Because we were in the middle of voting for a new Speaker of the House. Now, that's the second in line to the President of the United States. That's an official proceeding that was taking place, and they had to stop that official proceeding and get the Congress people out of there. I know that some of the pro-Palestine uh, protesters were arrested, but from what I understand, the majority of them um, are, if they weren't let go entirely, are going to be facing like a citation and a fine, as opposed to J6 protesters who got felony obstruction of an official proceeding, parading and picketing inside the Capitol. I mean, they were the pro-Palestine people were literally 
parading and picketing inside of the Capitol. And the, the other question that comes to mind is, how did they get in? I mean, there were hundreds of these protesters inside, and the Capitol Police actually released a statement later that day saying these protest this is illegal and these protesters are not allowed to be here. They're not allowed to do this. Well, they all had to come in through go through metal detectors, be screened. Nobody noticed that hundreds of pro-Palestine protesters were coming into the building at the same time. Right. Or maybe George Soros made a phone call and that's why it yeah. went all it went all very easily for them uh, that day. Hard to right. say. So, yeah, there's a double standard, the hypocrisy of this. We're still waiting for this January 6th footage to come out from Republicans. Hopefully we can reignite a fire under their behinds. We know members of Congress watch this show. Senator Chuck Grassley, hey, I know you watch the show. Please push to get that footage released to the American people so we can actually see this. But you're also here because we're celebrating. Um, the five-year anniversary of Walk Away is coming up here in just a few weeks. Um, in no on November 10th to the 12th, you're holding a big anniversary event in West Palm Beach, Florida. Tell us about the event. And for those that don't understand what Walk Away is, can you explain to our audience what Walk Away is? Yeah, so uh, Walk Away is a movement that I started in 2018 to encourage people to walk away from the Democratic Party as I did. I, I was a lifelong Democrat liberal who walked away. And really, honestly, it was the election of Donald Trump and the reaction from the media and reaction from so many people on the left that was the catalyst for opening my eyes because I just felt like the reaction to his election was, so, and, and I was feeling it too, by the way. I mean, I was very angry and scared and outraged, but w when I saw the sources like that I trusted my whole life, like CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, et cetera, just go so far off the, the deep end, it sort of signaled to me that something something wasn't right and I needed to try to figure out what it was. And so I kind of went on a long journey of research. And um, when I discovered ultimately that the media I'd been trusting my whole life was lying to me and deceiving me about everything that almost everything I believed, um, I decided to not only walk away, but basically kind of create uh, a movement and a community of support for other people who were feeling the same way because I knew I couldn't possibly be the only person. And so I launched a Facebook group in 2018 and I put out a six minute video talking about why I was walking away and encouraged other people to make videos and share their stories if they were feeling the same way. And over the course of just a couple of years, the group grew to over half a million people, about 511,000. And we had tens of thousands of written and video testimonials from people sharing their stories about why they were walking away. So it primarily started as a, a social media testimonial campaign but then we really got legs and we started doing live events, uh, debates, town halls. We started doing educational videos, traveling the country, getting into colleges. So we've had a footprint really everywhere and especially in minority communities. Um, but, you know, in January of 2021, Facebook banned our group after we'd grown to 511,000 people. And uh, that was right around the same time that the FBI kicked my door down and put me in jail. So a lot of things were kind of shattered at the same time. And so it's been a couple of years of rebuilding um, everything for me. And so that's why it's so important to me at this point to do this five year anniversary event, because we have been back out and, and doing what we do for the last year and a half. And um, we're not going to stop. I mean, it's it's you know, it's been a very rough road the last couple of years, but um, I'm, I'm really pleased to have launched this app and to be having this celebration basically to show people that you know, no matter what they do to you, you just can't stop. You have to keep going. Well, we're showing it here on the screen. Here is the app, and you can download it on the App Store on your iPhone or Android device. And it really is a replacement for Facebook because we, you know, we know our audience knows how we feel about Facebook around here. So and their collusion, of course, with the uh, with the Biden administration. So you get an access to this app and you can be able to tell your story there now on your own app, right? Right. So the app is called Walkaway Social. And as you said, it's it's available on the Apple App Store, or the Google Play Store. Um, so it can be used on any mobile device. And it's I'm very proud of it. Uh, people join it and we have a, a testimonial group where people can share their stories, video or written about, you know, why it's not just in, it's if you're walking away. But in the movement, there are and I didn't make this up, but when a lot of conservatives start getting really excited about walk away, 
they, they coined this term that they call walk withs, meaning they're there to support and walk with people who walk away. And um, I, I thought it was really cool because that's kind of something they came up with on their own. And so um, it's if, if you're somebody who walked away, you can share your story. But oftentimes we have people, too, who walk with the lifelong conservatives and Republicans who love to share their stories, either about just why they're conservatives or why they encourage people to walk away. And honestly, a lot of people on the right now are feeling very fed up uh, with the lack of courage and leadership from the Republican Party. And they're kind of vocalizing that as well. So it's a great sounding board, I think, for people all across the spectrum to talk about how they're feeling about what's going on culturally and politically in our country. We also have a discussion group on the app if people just want to you know, share opinions, share articles, open up a conversation about whatever. Uh, we have state groups for all 50 states if people are running for office or if they want to organize a, a, a social event or a political event or an activism event. There's so much we can do with this app. So I really encourage everyone to you know at least check it out, load it. It's free to use and uh, walk away social. Just check it out because I think you're really going to love it. It's pretty cool. So if you're in West Palm Beach, Florida, on November 10th through the 12th, you can come to the big event, a uh, big five-year anniversary event. Where can people get tickets if they want to go to the event? People can go to walkawayanniversary.com. It's our fifth anniversary event. Um, it's a weekend of events, and we're calling it Walkacon, like, uh, I don't know, Comic-Con, like Politicon. Right. Uh, but this is Walkacon. So Friday night is the big event. That's November 10th, and it's going to be our big showcase stage show. Um, we have amazing speakers Friday, November 10th, like Laura Trump, uh, Rudy Giuliani, Carrie Lake, Tudor Dixon, Matt and Mercedes Schlapp. David Harris Jr. and so many more. It's it's really going to be an incredible night. And then um, on Saturday the 11th, we're doing a free Patriot rally down the road from Mar-a-Lago. Uh, we're doing a comedy roast event on Saturday night. I'm actually being roasted. And then on Sunday, we're doing a brunch with Carrie Lake. And, uh, and then we're closing that out with a January 6th panel. We're actually going to have real defendants sharing real stories about January 6th. So people can come and, and enjoy the whole weekend. Um, or if they want to just come for one night, I really encourage them to come Friday night, November 10th. That's going to be our big night with all of our amazing speakers. And they can go to walkawayanniversary.com to get tickets. It's in West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, and if they like, they can actually uh, use... Uh, promo code America uh, to get a very significant discount on tickets. Awesome. All right. Promo code America. Yeah. We'll have this linked up in the description right. below. So the, uh, the big anniversary event again, November 10th in West Palm Beach, Florida, walkawayanniversary.com. Brandon, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. And uh, thanks for your courage. Thanks for what you're doing with this platform and giving voice to people who are fed up, fed up with these, <laughs> frankly, both of these political parties, but, but we know where we, uh, you know, these, these corrupt politicians as well. Brandon, thanks so much. And I appreciate you joining us here on the show. Well, and, and thank you too. And thank you for giving me a, a voice and a platform because as much as I'm fighting back and coming back, it hasn't always been easy. You know, a lot of people, even on our side of the aisle, kind of run the other direction. So I want to say thank you so much for giving me a voice. Absolutely. We are, we are unafraid here on this show. So thank you, Brandon. We appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.